tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. Hello. In Maya, go to the FX menu set here. Modeling, rigging, animation, FX, rendering, you use FX. Then you find the end particles here. And a typical end particle system can be created, for example, by using the command create emitter. It creates an emitter and a particle and a nucleus, all with the same with this single command and uh, when you run the simulation which is not an animation with keyframes it's a simulation physical sim simulation they, they fall down let's create a new scene another way to uh, create particles are emit from object so you need an object for example this object and end particles and emit from object and then the particles will be emitted from that object and there are ways to manipulate that so you have more particles right here spread them all over the place etc but today I want to show you the end particle placer it's the end particle tool here which allows you to place particles individually on the grid and you can take your time actually uh, what you've seen before are high amounts of particles which are just reacting to forces in the in the world but now you will create individual particles and um, apply the sources in the world to them so let's go to the top window and use the default settings here under n particles n particle tool we get this new cross here for uh, as our cursor and now we can, for example, place 10 or so particles right here and 10 particles here or 11 or 5 or, f or 8 and the same here and we have something like a rectangular structure. And when we press enter, the particle system is in the world already with a nucleus and a particle. Now we can go to, the, to this view here and change the appearance of the particles first of all they fall down because they have gravity that's fine but uh, we'll change the appearance and the appearance is always under shading so when you pick the particle system here and use the tab n particle shape you find the shading down here and the shading is by default set to points and you can set them to set the shading to spheres so you have these little spheres here if you want them to have a different color go to the color tab here or the color section and maybe change that color to this kind of yellow or blue because it's a better contrast to the background I have here so what they still do is they fall to the ground do they behave dynamically apart from falling to the ground of course they do uh, you can for example use one of the fields here under fields and solvers you have the vortex field for example which um, you can move up here so it's sitting uh, right here and you can deactivate the gravity which we'll do just in a second and uh, for that purpose we choose the end particles and here in the end particles we have dynamic properties it's uh, more to the top than to the bottom and uh, here we have ignore the solver gravity so the nucleus is in the scene but uh, we'll ignore the gravity so we only have the vortex field working now let's extend the frame range now you see that they separate and they are individual particles about 40 I placed on that ground plane now when you're in the particle world and have that nucleus in the scene 
you can place as many particles into the scene as you like. You can, for example, now go to end particles and create an emitter emitting particles, what we've seen before. Uh, they will all use the same nucleus. So if you reduce the gravity in the nucleus, for example, from uh, 9.8 to, say, 5, all the objects in the scene will react to that. What we'll do now is we create a second particle object here with the same command, the particle tool, and uh, this time we just place them like this. Press enter. So we have a second particle system. Where does it sit? Right here. And it reacts to the forces in our world. If we place that particle system right here, and now we change the shape, to spheres and we make the spheres red by going to color and red dark red very nice we can make them a little bit bigger if we like it doesn't affect the dynamics though uh, it's here under particle size and the current radius is set to 0 0.2 let's go to 0 0.3 so they're bigger and now uh, we run the simulation and you see that they interact because the red ones have gravity and the others don't react to the gravity. And that's all I wanted to show you. Oh, no. I wanted to show you something else, really. Uh, let's go back to the first particles here. And an interesting thing is if you close all these things here, all these sections, go to lifespan. Currently, when do they get out of view? more or less like frame 140. We can change the lifespan now. And uh, the lifespan is measured in seconds. So 136 frames uh, is about five seconds. So we can type in five here. Create a randomness of one and a seed of any number, 22. And now the blue particles will disappear randomly after a couple of seconds. Now they gone. And with this I definitely leave you alone now. Have fun with dynamics and placing single end particles into the scene. Bye bye.